Hi, I want to share with you my Poison Flurry Rogue. There are already some videos and guides on YouTube about this build, but um, I think it's a slightly different approach here. And I just realized since the leveling process, so from leveling 1 to 50, Flurry Rogue was very fun and very strong and even though I'm level 68 now, as you can see, I started farming uh, tier 4 with level 56, I believe. So I finished the capstone dungeon with Elias at level 56, I think. And from there I started uh, farming tier 4 and dropping all the level 60 items that I could not use yet. So. Even though I got stronger now and found some better gear, I promise you this build is capable of farming even 10 levels below. So even under 60, which is quite impressive, I think. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to share with you this uh, my approach to Flurry Poison Rogue. And just start with the gameplay part of it, so you can see how I farm this dungeon. So basically your uh, skill rotation is you port to you teleport to an enemy with shadow step like with most rogue builds and immediately after you um, use shadow step on an enemy you use your first uh, basic attack so in my case um, yeah you just uh, it's a puncture the name uh, you use puncture one time and what this does in melee uh, range is that you make the enemy you hit with puncture uh, vulnerable and after that you immediately cast your flurry and this flurry cast will make all of the enemies around you vulnerable. And of course we're playing with the legendary aspect which um, improves flurry so you uh, hit all enemies around you in a big circle. So this is your core uh, skill rotation. You jump to an enemy, you puncture one enemy with your basic attack and immediately cast uh, spam flurries after it and all, all enemies will become vulnerable instantly. And what you also do is you use your poison imbue. So your poison imbuement skill is your main, um, main source of damage and as you can see for trash mobs in tier 4 it's no problem at all, they just melt down instantly. And even bosses and elites will melt down very quickly. And to even faster up this process with uh, elites and bosses, we play the variant with uh, Shadow Clone. So before this variant, I played with Poison Trap and I played with um, Concealment for more CC breaks because the most like the number one reason for you dying in, T4, uh, in uh, tier 4 with rogue is if you get cc'd and you can't escape from a cc and the enemies will just one hit you or two hit you so yeah concealment is quite nice but um, shadow clone is very nice versus elites and bosses and i will show you later with my gear that um, i play with the with legendary with a legendary aspect um, which makes your shadow clone mimic your vulnerable uh, mimic your poison abuement skills so what this basically does is it just doubles up your damage so you can spam poison abuements and with shadow clone it just doubles your poison abuements so yeah basically double damage so yeah you can kill bosses and elites quite fast with this so i think here you can see um i just used my ultimate and my poison human so yeah very quickly and i mean this is a regular dungeon um, but especially if you want to farm nightmare dungeons with higher tiers for example tier 30 40 whatever then it will make a huge difference so then you will just uh, feel how quicker how much faster you can clear all this uh, elites and especially it's also kind of your survival tool because um, how you survive as a rogue in uh, tier 4 is you heal 
uh, you heal a lot if you damaged. So if you W damage, you also W healing kinda. And yeah, this is very important for dealing damage and surviving the very like the nightmare dungeon elite mobs and bosses. So yeah. This is mostly the build. I will finish this dungeon and uh, after this show you my gear and my skills very quickly. It's a lot of fun, as you can see. You, we make a lot of AOE, AOE damage. Um, I think it's even faster than the meta build right now with uh, Twisting Blades. So... Um, I don't know, I think this build is very under, under, underpresented. Can you say it like this? Like very... It's not in the place where it should be, I think. Because it's much stronger than people believe. And of course you need some gear to make it work, but like I said, I play, I play this build since the beginning and it felt very powerful all through the game and even before I found some of the more advanced items. So yeah, in the next step I will show you my gear and my skills and stuff. So see you there. Okay, so now I will show you my gear. So this is first of my stats. As you can see, my attack power is growing. That's because I have the aspect which uh, gives me more damage every second I stand still. And with this build, you can actually kind of use this aspect since you are standing still quite a time. But if I move, then this is my real stats. So quite good for my level, I would say. And uh, maybe let's start with the most important part. So of course you want your flurry aspect. You can get it very early from dungeons. So this makes um, that your flurry is casting um, flurries around you in a circle and not only in front of you. And the damage here is not that important of course. If you have a better one then uh, it's fine. But um, this aspect is not the most important uh, regarding of damage. So um, I put it on a very nice ring. You want with this build, you usually want um, maximum maximum life because you're very squishy. And on rings especially, you want critical strike chance and critical strike damage. And here I also have damage versus poison enemies, so it's also quite nice. Then um, another very important aspect I think is the imbuement skill potency one. So basically, it um, increases your power of your imbuements. And I also, I already found the perfect roll with 80% on a um, crossbow. Um, because on 200 weapons, the bonus is doubled up. So usually it would be 40, but now it's 80. Um, and this is the aspect I think you should put on your two-handed weapon. And you should also always use a crossbow. And the reason for this is you will just double up, nearly double up your poison imbuement and as I told you with your shadow clone which mimics your poison imbuement your poison imbuement will be the most damage source for elites bosses and all enemies basically so if you max if you can uh, maximize your damage with poison imbuement then you will scale uh, most uh, you, like your character your damage will scale with this the mo in the most efficient way so yeah you want to put this aspect on the crossbow and you want a crossbow because you want to maximize your vulnerable damage amount. So crossbows comes with vulnerable damage in the base. In, in this case, 39%. And here you want usually a, another FX vo vulnerable damage. Um, in this case, I don't have one. But I'm quite happy with the FXs I have. Because as you can see, I have 140 dexterity, 55 to all stats, so quite a lot stats and dexterity, which also can improve your damage quite a lot. Also, I have 37% uh, core skill damage, also very nice because Flurry uh, obviously is a core skill. And damage to close enemy, also quite nice. So yeah, these are, I would say, the most important aspects. Um, then I found this one, um, the Umbral aspect is quite nice if you have resource problems. Before that, I used the Mother's Embrace. That's a ring that is very likely to drop after you kill Lilith. I think it always drops after you kill Lilith, but I'm not sure. So I think one ring for resource regeneration is quite nice because um, we want to spam our flurry and spam our poison imbuements. 
So yeah, you need some resources. I found a very nice one with four, like max roll, four restored primary resource for crowd control enemies. And now, um, like crowd control is also very important for um, this rogue. And as you can see with this ring, it's the first case where you want, why you want crowd control, but there are so many other cases. And I was very lucky I found um, these boots in the first day of tier 3. And this is the penitent griefs which uh, leave behind trail of frost. So basically you just don't need anything else than these boots and you apply automatically crowd control to all enemies around you. So this is very useful. You also deal up to 9 up to 10% more damage to them and you just um, trigger so many effects with this just because you crowd control enemies. But of course this is unique boots and maybe you will need some time to find them. But it's no problem because you can all also use another aspect. And this is the Mangler's aspect I believe. So um, with lucky hits you have a chance up to in my case 62% to um, daze enemies if I make them vulnerable. And as you know with this build, with the flurries, uh, I make all of my enemies vulnerable. So I just need to have a quite high lucky hit and then quite high stats on this one. And then most of my enemies will get dazed. And this is quite uh, useful because this is also crowd control. So it synergizes very well with uh, the umbral aspect on the ring. So you get a lot of energy back. And also I will show you my skills later. It can, you can use this to make uh, enemies, to knock them back. Uh, knocking enemies back also as a rogue provides you additional up to 12% crit chance. So it's very nice in overall. It's a defense aspect, it's an offense aspect. It gives you so many things at once. And you can find this one very quickly in the game. And on the amulet, I just found uh, this amulet once. Um, it's uh, yeah, level 50 amulet, but it has movement speed, it has damage with dual wielded weapons, damage reduction. So overall, you want stats, you want skill, uh, like good skill, plus skill to good skills. You want uh, dexterity maybe, you want... Uh, crit chance, crit damage, but yeah, just take your best amulet you have. Um, so let's go to the helmet. Um, here I have, you take 21% less damage from crowd control enemies. So again, crowd controlling enemies is very important in this game. And on helmet, and on your armory in general, you want maximum life. You want, um, in this case, I have healing. It's quite nice because I heal a lot with this build. Um, so on the helmet I would say healing, maximum life, plus 4 to poison imbuement, very good. And then maybe some stats, um, so yeah, this is very nice. On the chest, um, I'm missing maximum life, I really want maximum life, but I just couldn't re-roll it, I tried so many times. So here I just have total armor, damage reduction and dexterity, and also a little bit damage. So just high armor is uh, quite nice. We You want to stack up armor because this is the most important defensive um, thing that um, lets you survive the tier 4 mobs. And, and the legendary aspect here is a barrier each time I fight um, elite mobs or bosses. So this one saved me a lot. Actually, I think in the gameplay there was one moment where I was close to dying, but the barrier just saved my ass. So it's very good. Alternatively, you can also um, switch this with something like this. Basic skill grants 20% damage reduction. Also very nice since we use our basic skill very often in this build. So yeah, you can just make your choice here. Then another very important aspect here I didn't mention yet. You want to have the... Um, I don't know the name exact exactly. But you want to have this aspect with lucky hit, 10% chance to create a toxic pool, uh, which you, which gives you um, unlimited poison imbuement charges and no cooldown on poison imbuement. So, especially with bosses and elites and higher tiers, if you can trigger this quite, um, quite stable, like quite uh, often, you will have, like, yeah. Um, 
like an extremely big amount of damage since you can use your poison and human very often frequently and also your charges um maybe i should have shown this aspect first um here's the aspect where the shadow clones uh, mimics your immune skills which i told you before you just double up your damage quite uh, basically and here it also says uh, your shadow clones have ex increased damage if you use your imbue skill. And so together with this aspect, if you spam your imbue skills um, while staying in this uh, poison cloud, um, you will also increase the damage of your shadow clones. So this can scale pretty quickly, pretty, pretty fast. It's, uh, it's just insane. So basically with this build, you want to maximize, like, to, like you need to lucky hits first, Okay, so you can try to improve your lucky hits, but it's quite difficult. But you want, most importantly, you want a critical strike chance and critical strike damage. So you're playing a very heavy crit build with this, because critical strikes provide you the chance to create this toxic cloud. And um, yeah, so you want critical strike chance and lucky hits, um, if you can afford this. So, and basically... I would recommend you to put the aspects the same way I did. I have thought about this in a very long, uh, like I had a long thought process about this, and I think this is the best way to put the aspect on the on your gloves because you need the ring for you need one ring for resource regeneration. You need one ring for flurry. Of course, you could also put flurry on the on the gloves. It uh, doesn't matter, but uh, don't put this. Um, don't put this on somewhere else, like the weapon, like the two-handed weapon or something. So just basically, um, I think the way I have it is most is by far uh, by now the the way I prefer it. So yeah, very important aspect. Then another important aspect: um, you want to increase your armor each time you deal damage, and this can stack up to forty-five percent in my case. And again, you want maximum life, you want uh, damage reduction, armor, stats. Um, I will upgrade this soon, I think. It's not the best pants for my level. But yeah, this is the defensive aspect you want. So I think now I have all my gear showed. Um, also this weapon, um, like I told you, I have increased damage per second. You can also switch this. I think that's the best, better aspect for this, um, which provides you critical strike chance for hitting vulnerable enemies or for making enemies vulnerable. But uh, I don't have it uh, yet, so um, you have a couple of choices here. You can also use the one which um, which gives your uh, primary, which gives your core. Yeah, here I think this one uh, attacking. Enemies with basic skills increases the damage of your core skills, so this is also an alternative for your weapon. Okay, so the skills. I uh, Like I said, uh, puncture with the fundamental puncture. This is very important to make enemies vulnerable. And this is the combination together with flurry, and you want to go for improved flurry. This is the one that applies, uh, makes this combination possible. Then you want one point in shadow step, and I prefer the disciplined shadow step uh, just because you have a uh, quicker like reuse and less cooldown, which is very important. One point of dash is, is uh, enough, um, so these two are your mobility skills. Then you want to maximize your weapon mastery for damage. You Oh, here I forgot, very important, you want sturdy three points. Maybe you can go a little bit less on like one point. Depends on how many skill points you have, but very important you want free auto free with siphoning strikes since this heals you up. And by the way, flurry also heal you up. Um, so with this build you have very, very much healing. And um, one thing regarding healing, of course you want. Um, I forgot to mention if you can find the unique pants, like the Tamaris or what was the name? One second. The temerity. Um, if you can find temerities, it's very nice because temerities um, have the unique effect that you, instead of healing, you are gaining a barrier on, over your life, so it makes you a lot more tankier. But as you saw, you don't need this. Even without the temerity barrier thing, you can heal up so much that you survive in most situations in tier four. 
So, but yeah, this is very important. Then here, um, this is um, this is only makes sense if you play with the aspect which provides um, dazing enemies. Like um, you have a lucky hit to daze enemies, which happens quite often, by the way. Um, but and if you have this aspect, then I would recommend you put three points in concussive because here you get 12% uh, critical strike chance. And then only one point here is enough, um, so dazed enemies become knocked out, uh, knocked down, and this point is enough to activate the concussive passive, so you get 12% critical strike chance after knocking down enemies. If you don't have this, um, you can put the point somewhere else, I will show you later. Here you need nothing except the exploit, and also if you have... Um, you can put some points here, for example, instead of um, sturdy, maybe put some points here to be to get um, to increase your damage. But it depends on how tanky you are, how much ta life and armor you have. So I have no points here right now. Then you want to maximize your poison imbuement. This is your major um, damage dealer. And I prefer the blended poison imbuement since you critical strike very often and this just gives you more damage. Here, one point for Deadly Venom is enough. You want to maximize the 15% less damage to be tankier. And also here, one point is enough. So you just get 1% increased attack speed for each enemy. And this gets to 15% very quickly. Here, very important, the Shadow Clone with uh, all the enhancements. And here, I really like Innervation. So... I have lucky hits to grant me energy, so I can really spam my poison, my poison imbuement and my flurries. And together with this and my ring and my uh, crowd control, I have uh, very much, I have no problems with energy as you saw in the gameplay. Also here I like to put one point in Adrenaline Rush to maximize haste, so you have more increased attack speed or more movement speed re regarding on your maximum energy. And here... Um, many people go for momentum, but I think this is not as good as close quarter combat, since we always use our puncture to make the enemies vulnerable for the combo. We always have the close quarter combat bonus active, so we always have 20% more attack speed and we have 20% more damage in against quad control enemies. And as you can see, this is a multiplied like the X, um, the X uh, implies that it's a multiplied damage uh, aspect, uh, damage affix. So it increases your whole damage by 20%, which is quite nice. So I really advise you playing with close quarter combat. Um, one thing before Paragon, with the ultimate, you should play with preparation, I think. Since every 100 energy spent, your ultimate skill uh, cooldown is reduced by 4 seconds. And also the skill resets all your other cooldowns, so also your poison imbuement. So yeah, if you play with the Shadow Clone variant, preparation is good. Otherwise I played with combo points. Um, so yeah, combo points is the alternative here, but I prefer preparation with Shadow Clone. Paragon, I don't want to make it quite complicated, I also don't have ma much of it. I think the most important glyph is the um, efficiency efficiency glyph, um, which provides you additional 20% potency. So together with your aspect, you have 100% increased potency. So this just, I don't know if it doubles up. No, it, it doesn't double up, but it just makes the poison imbuement stronger. And this is very important. And here, yeah, you just, um, so you want to level up this glyph first. And then I have chosen um, this legendary note, cheap, cheap shot, uh, just because I have so much crowd control with dazing enemies, knocking back the enemies and chilling enemies. Um, I have this 25% bonus all the time active, so yeah, that's, it's very nice for this build. And the second glyph is uh, the combat glyph, um, which gives me additional critical strike damage with core skills, so we have uh, a lot of crits, so it's very good to scale on critical damage with this build. Um, as you can see, I don't have the requirements uh, yet, so I still have to level this glyph, um, but yeah, it's not perfect, but this is, these are the two glyphs I would go for. 
and maybe I can show you my stats. My critical strike chance is 34%, but I have a lot of skills. Um, by the way, I have forgotten this one. Here you also uh, you also put three points in precision imbuement. So here I gain nine percent more critical strike chance. Then here I have twelve twelve percent more critical strike chance with the uh, legendary aspect, which I don't have yet. You gain an uh, another nine percent critical strike chance. So you have very much critical strike chance um, beyond which is shown here. And also very, like, last tip in general, vulnerable damage is very strong right now in Diablo 4, so you want to maximize vulnerable damage as, as much as you can. Here I have 132, it's not that much, but as, as I said, the more you have of this, vulnerable damage, it's very nice, and critical strike chance, critical strike damage, these three things, I would say, are the best stats for Rogue right now, especially with this build. So yeah, I think this is it. Uh, I try to do it as quickly as possible. It's a lot of fun. Oh, may maybe last thing you want um, you want to put your skulls into your jewelry, and you want to put your green gems into your weapons and your uh, red gems into your armory. Here I have a yellow one. I don't know why. Actually, this should be also green okay so yeah i hope you liked it uh try this out even for leveling and in the end game it's a very nice build um very um underused i think and a lot of fun so i hope you enjoyed this video and try out this poison flurry rogue see ya